extra minutes. So this is the control room. The control room is sort of like the uh, the brain of the mm -hmm. studio, where when you're recording in the main live room, all of the microphones and all the sound comes through this board and uh, into the speakers. So this is where you make the sound or get the sound of an album. So this recording console, this is a Neve 8028 from the early 70s. Mm -hmm. This is the board that I bought from Sound City, uh, the studio here in the San Fernando Valley that I made a documentary about. So this board has so much history to it, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, Who's recorded on this thing? I, I mean, do you have 60 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, everybody's recorded on this. Everyone from George Harrison to Barry White to Tom Petty to mm. uh, Santana to Fleetwood Mac to Metallica to Nine Inch Nails. Um, I'm connected to it because this is the board that Nirvana made our record Nevermind on. Mm. And when, when I heard that the studio was going out of business, I offered to buy this board from them. At first they said that they would never sell it. Mm. And I, I, I just imagined it would go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because mm. everyone's recorded on this thing. Um, so how did you get it? Well, they gave it to me because they knew I would use it. Mm. A lot of people would buy this board and they would sell each individual channel for $10,000 a piece because... Are you serious? Oh yeah. Yeah, these, I mean, this this type of board um, is still to this day considered like the Cadillac of recording consoles. Mm. And just like any vintage car, like these things, this is, this is, this is class A vintage equipment and it mm. has a specific sound, you know? So um, a lot of people would just take some of these uh, pieces and use them to like go through a computer and get an analog sound mm -hmm. but they knew that I would keep the whole board and use it as a recording console and I felt like I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for this board so this board is responsible for the sound of Smells Like Teen Spirit mm -hmm. or never mind the record it's because of this board that it sounded the way it did and had it sounded any other way I don't know if I would be here so I always felt like this board is responsible for everything that came after it. Um, Do so you love this board as almost as much as your children? I mean, I feel <laughs> <It> sounds <laughs> don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I, I think that the, it, it's something that people don't really take into consideration. That you know, you look at it and you probably think like, "Wow, cool mm. knobs, buttons, or boards, knobs. or whatever." But um, but really, uh, there's a life inside this board. This board sounds like itself, and it mm. sounds like no, no other board in the world. And you turn it on, and it like smells, and it smells like mm. burning wires and dust, and and it does something specific. It has a personality, and um, so I, I, you know, I love the the um, the accessibility and the advantages that a young musician has now recording in a computer that you can mm. make an album in your bathroom if you want to with a laptop and a microphone. Mm. Um, and then you can click a button and it goes to the rest of the world. But man, like, I'm also a hopeless romantic. Like, <laughs> this to me is like, I am, this is, this is my love of music, right? here. You feel how it's warm. I mean, oh, feel it. Like, just, you feel oh, it? It feels sexy. I'm telling it you. Feels like, it feels good, huh? <laughs> See? Ooh, yeah. So, um. How many times, do you ever come in here on your own and just have a quiet time with your soundboard? Please say no. Please say no. That's a little weird, isn't it? <laughs> no, why? I would never do that. That's strange. <laughs> and then over here, okay, well, the, one of the great things about it, too, this board, is mm -hmm. that um, when it was in uh, Sound City, the studio, um, Carl Perkins, the legendary Carl Perkins, yeah. signed the board in 1996 when he recorded there. And he was the only person to sign it. So when I moved it over here, I thought, well, I'm just going to have everyone from the movie sign it. So you've got mm. Stevie Nicks. Oh, yeah, great. And you've got Tom Petty. Mm. You've got John Fogarty. You've got Lindsey Buckingham. You've got uh, Paul. Paul McCartney. You've got yeah. Trent Reznor. And there's Joan Jett. Everyone signed this thing. Yeah. Well, the best is Rupert Neve, the man that ah, designed, designed it. I mean, he's, you know, he's like the, the Einstein mm. of recording equipment and, and so overlooking this thing at all times is I noticed 
You know, okay, so this was not my doing, just so you know. Yeah, really? It, well, when we built this studio, I sort of imagined that I would have a like a big oak desk in mm. an office, mm. and that behind me, I would have a photo <laughs> of myself in a smoking jacket with a cognac and a... Um, cigar. Cigar. I, I think that looks suits you. Well, the... Thanks. The uh, road crew commissioned that and put it in here without telling me. So it took me a, a good 45 minutes of working mm. in here before I noticed what it was. <laughs> I sort of turned around like... <gasps> well, let's see. Is it... Yeah, it looks like... Yeah. How long ago was that painted? Maybe 10 years ago. That's me, circa 2005. <laughs> Definitely you look a little. Long. You look a little younger in that uh, painting than than you do today. That's a shitty thing to say. <laughs> well, I don't know. You I mean you look, you look? You're great, but you know. Thanks. You know. You Let's good. keep walking. Okay. Oh, here's another cool thing. Is my mom at some point? She. Did, I don't want to sound like a fucking mama's boy, but come on. She took all my old rock T-shirts and she made pillows out of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? So your mom made this? Yeah. Oh. They're so gross now. Yeah. Never touch the pillows in a recording studio. <laughs> I don't want to know why. No, you don't want to know.